Hi everyone and welcome back and in this video we are going to talk about CQRS implementations CQRS with event sourcing or without event sourcing so in this playlist I was talking about different microservice pattern like event driven architecture we talked about event driven pattern we talked about uh, CQRS basic CQRS and then different microservice architecture patterns whatever the possibility we have and we have divided into uh, multiple categories uh, we talked about API gateway pattern aggregate pattern a lot of patterns right so this is one of that CQRS implementation with event sourcing and what all different examples what all different tools you can use for that implementation if you have heard about Exxon Exxon server right Exxon is actually a framework which is providing a CQRS implementation for your Java based applications. Similarly, if you are writing Node.js, in Node.js also you can use Nest.js CQRS or CQRS is just a methodology, right? This is how we are actually segregating the read and write. Same kind of implementation you can write in any of your language, programming language. So in this slide, we'll just talk about CQRS and event sourcing or CQRS without event sourcing. CQRS is just about command query responsibility segregation where we are separating out command and query. Command means you are executing something, you are actually commanding to change something. Query means you are reading something. And event is when something has happened, then you will raise an event to do something. Right? This is how microservice typically communicates. Like if you talk about event driven pattern in this you, you execute something and then raise an event so that another microservice can trigger something based on the event which has already happened you will be sending some data okay this event has happened now this is my metadata take this metadata and do something based on the event which has already happened okay so there are many ways in microservices communicates either HTTP protocol either gRPC either RPC or they may be a simple uh, call they are making just to make a communication right so challenges with the events right what what is the problem with the event driven design or typical development where we are not maintaining the state of the the events which are coming so events are atomic publications and uh, they are actually committing to the state so initially you have state x some event will uh, come an event will change the system state to x1 so making sure that events are truthful representation of current state we have in system so whatever the event is happening we will we will never be able to make sure that this particular event is the truthful representation of the current state which we are having right now because you have a 10 to 20 events has already passed and you are getting the 21st event so based on that event you will not be able to identify the truthful representation of state so how we actually maintain the state so there should be some kind of a store event store so where like in the simple financial transaction system your debit credit debit credit is happening so in that case it's better to store all those events happening on your account inside some kind of a event store which will have all the history of your events which has happened against your database right so here we have a reader and writer event all the application writer is coming to the event queue event queue can be anything and then we are storing all those events which are happening inside an event store then event store is making uh, the updates onto the system and then reader app is getting the updated application state but in this particular case all the incoming events are being stored in the event store and you will know for this particular event what is the next state of the system is going to be debit 10 rupees credit 10 dollar right so you already know based on this debit credit if you are storing them in a particular event store you will know what the final state is going to be you can even replay the whole system state okay why we need event sourcing event sourcing is nothing but a, having the transactional history history of all the events which is happening against your system it is single source of truth you can replay the event to capture the again the same state replay into a new cqrs you can debug it and you will get the historical data of all the events 
So uh, for CQRS, there are various implementations available. Exxon is one of it. I recently explore, explored Exxon server, like it is providing this CQRS implementation by segregating read and write. In Exxon, we can just implement very easily. For any Spring Boot Java application, you just need to define the Exxon dependency in the, the pom.xml and just run your Spring Boot REST APIs and you have to just write your command handlers, query handlers. Okay, so what is CQRS? Now we already know that CQRS is segregating this command and the query. So command will, we are triggering command to change some, um, to make updates, right? And all those events, all those uh, executions will store in the event store and then event store will raise an event. And that event will trigger the projection logic to update the projection database. And we are doing read from the projection database. I mean, if you look at the, the documentations at the different places on the documentation, then you will find CQRS is being implemented in different ways. The real objective is you should be able to segregate read and write. Now it's on you if you wanted to implement an event store to store all these different kind of events which are happening in system. I mean, which uh, there are many benefits of storing the events. You will be able to get or replay the whole state of the system, right? If we just talk about this, so this is the command handler. Command will publish. So this is a combination of a command and event driven design because we are using event bus. You are sending a command, command is getting published to the event bus. This domain handler will retrieve that particular command and it will update in this repository of the database. It will persist then, it will persist that event in the event store. This is one single life cycle of a command. Okay, command is stored in the event store. Now, user will do a normal query. Okay, this is the view handler. View handler will send a event to the event bus and we will retrieve the information from this repository. Right, so you can see we have segregated read and write in two different places. So view handlers will get the data from either the same database or there may be a different kind of a projection running between the write database and read database whenever you are writing something on the database. It will be synchronizing the read database so you don't need to depend on a single data source. You can actually scale up your read database based on the because you will be getting a lot of traffic for read. So you can scale up based on the readability of database and you can optimize the right database for the right queries. You can optimize the database for read queries. So two different database, two different objective, total isolation and the projection will be doing the logic. In this particular case, uh, we are actually view handlers will request a query. This will publish to the event bus from event bus. We will be just reading the database from reading the data from the same data. Okay, and everything is being stored in the event store. In the event store, you will be storing only those things which are changing the state of the system. Okay. Now, what all other implementations are available? You can also look at the CQRS with NestJS in Node.js. So NestJS is a framework and it has a NestJS CQRS as a library, which is providing the mini implementation at micro level in a simple service. So it is segregating the the read query handlers and command handlers, you will dispatch the query handler and command handler from your REST APIs and you will be writing controllers, controllers will be dispatching the command and queries and if you have the event store then these commands can be stored in the event store with the current state and the next state which is getting updated and you can write the projection logic which will update the database. Okay, so I, I will not talk about CQRS in terms of NestJS which is totally a different topic but this is how all these things are interrelated. So CQRS is, uh, I can say, a more popular these days where you want to have a transactional state of a system. Whatever the events, whatever the command which are getting executed, if you wanted to store the state of the system, then you will be attaching event sourcing with CQRS. Event sourcing is nothing but a uh, storing the events which are happening in system so that you can replay it you can actually do a time traveling with that particular state. Okay, this was the state Then my current state was this. The data look like that. Okay, so now I have covered actually the basics of all these different 
architecture pattern, CQRS, event driven, right API gateway pattern and many more. Now it's time to start with the Node.js like we will be writing the microservices using Docker Compose. Uh, we have a Docker Compose, you just need to have a Docker setup, Docker dump and running. So you will be able to spin up the containers. One is a Node.js, MySQL, RabbitMQ, one is so RabbitMQ we can use for implementing the event driven mechanism. Okay. Other than that, we will have the CQRS, all these in, in hands-on so that you will get more clarity. Okay. Thanks everyone.